So here's an example of a foam stain that I made. You will be making a dovetail joint. So you can see it will come apart and it will slide right in. So you can easily store it or put it away or make it a little more portable. Um, it can hold a phone. So you can set a phone in there. Or you can also use it to hold a tablet. It does work for that as well. hold up different devices. Once you are signed into Tinkercad, what you'd like to do is to click create new design. This will open up a new workspace for you. And once you get into Tinkercad, I would immediately go to the upper left-hand corner and change the name. So you want to have your first and last name. And also put the name of the project and your class. So I would type five, wherever your classes or grading classes, so I'm gonna put G Tula, and then give it a name so I know what it is. So this would be a phone stand. To enter, that will start to save your picture. To make your phone stand, the first thing we're going to do is to make our dovetail joint. So we're gonna go over to the right hand side and click and drag in a box shape. We want to make it 12 meters high, so I can either scroll in with my zoom mouse or hit the fit to selected shape button. We want to make this 12 high, so you can click and drag the box. You might have to change your angle of your camera so you can see the, the height, the Z. I'm going to drag this down to 12, or you can click and just type 12. So now if I click in the corner, I have a box that's 20 by 20 and 12 inch or 12 millimeters high. Next thing we're going to do is to bring in a roof shape. So I'll set it right next to my box. And we're going to bring in the width of it. We're going to make it 12. we have our roof shape. The next thing we're going to do is to align these so it's centered. You could try to get it lined up, but it's going to be, it's not always easy to do. But a tool that makes it really easy. So it's going to left click and drag to select both shapes. So I said this have two shapes selected. Now on the upper right hand side, there's a button that says align or a keyboard shortcut L. If I click on that, it's going to bring up a whole bunch of dots. It looks really confusing. If we just kind of take a little closer look, we see we have three dots going vertical. Then we also have dots on each side on the plane. We want to center it on the main work plane. So I'm going to click the center button here. I want to make this edge flush, so line your right up. So if I click on this bot little button in the corner, that's going to line it up. Remember, if you make a mistake, you always can hit Control Z, which will let you back up one notch. So if I just take a look at my triangle, it's completely inside the box. What we'd like to do is to raise up the triangle. So unfortunately, I have it so perfectly lined up, it's hard to click on the triangle. So you might have to kind of rotate a little bit. So right now my triangle is selected. I'm going to click on the little black cone and drag it up and that's the box. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit D to put it back down after it's selected. All right, now you can see it changed to green and I know it's my triangle. I'll try again. Click the little black cone and raise it. I would put yours to seven. I'm just gonna undo that so you can see it again. So you maybe notice on the right hand side over here, this changes as I lift it up, this shows the height that is off the ground. You can also, when you're raising or lowering it, just click and type seven. We need to have it at least higher 
over half the height in our box was 12. So seven is over half the height. So that's fine right where it is. And we're gonna change this triangle into a whole type. So right now it's a solid. If I go on the right over here and click on whole, you see it became transparent. And what we need to do is to group the two shapes together to make the actual cut. So I'm going to left click on the outside, drag, so I get both shapes. If you also have one shape select, you can hold down your shift key and click on the second shape. It's another way to select multiple shapes. On the top part, right hand side, there's a button that says group. It looks like two shapes morphing together. If I click on that, it's going to group it. Let's see how it cut out that triangle. So I'm going to undo so you can see it again. Select both shapes group. Now you can always ungroup it by clicking the button next to it. So you don't have to, it's not forever gone. It's just a whole type. So this part of our joint dovetail joint is finished. Now we're going to pull in another box to make the top part. So I'm going to drop it right next to it. This one we're going to keep at 20. So we're keep it as a perfect cube. We could bring it down a little bit, 15 maybe. So slightly bigger. All right, now we're gonna make another triangle. Another triangle we had made 12. This one we're going to make 11, just a little bit smaller. We're also gonna bring down the height so if I click on the white box, the top of my triangle, we're going to bring it down to nine. It's just again, slightly smaller than the triangle we had before, which was a 10. Now we're going to align our shapes up again. So it's right in the center. And this one we're also going to put to the corner. Now this time we're going to lift up the box. I'm going to grab the black cone and you want to have it a little bit higher. Uh, right now mine is at five. Um, if you want to give yourself a little bit more clearance, you could type 5.1 or 5.2. Um, five is a really tight fit. The printer does a good job printing, so it, five would, would be okay. Just to, 5.1 or 0.2 is going to give you a little bit more wiggle room in case the print isn't perfect. I'm just going to double check to make sure everything is aligned. So now the gray, that is gray. So I know it is aligned already. Now we're going to group these two shapes together. All right, now what I'm going to do is to do a test fit to see if these shapes all line up. I want to make sure it would look like it fits. Just to make it easier, I'm going to change the color. And to make it even easier, I'm going to change it to transparent so I can see how much it overlaps. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to lift it up. Zoom in a little bit so I can see. You can also use the arrows on your keyboard to move shapes around. If I kind of rotate around, you can set a little bit of a gap in, in between there. There isn't a whole lot there, but like I said, it's pretty tight. If you wanted to ungroup it and raise up the box a little bit, too, you could slightly. But I just want to make sure that you don't have um, it too big where it doesn't have any gaps at all. Or if it's overlapping, then it would not work. So this will work just fine. I'm going to do next is to just take this off to the side. I'm going to hit the D key to put it down to the work plane. And it doesn't matter if you leave it uh, as a solid or transparent. I'm going to turn off just so it's, I can tell it looks, make sure it's not a hole. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to rotate. And we're going to rotate the notch. 90 degrees onto this side. So if I look on the top of my shape here, there's a double arrow. 
you can just move your mouse so it rotates. Or if you hold the shift key, it will snap. You can also rotate a little bit and then type 90. Now if I just take a look at it, rotate around and do a check, it looks like it is all on the floor, on the ground. You just want to make sure that it is not like below the work plane or anything like that. If you ever want to make sure it's on the floor, just click on your shape and hit D. That will make sure it is on the ground. Now we're going to save these these two pieces of custom shapes. You can use it anytime later without having to open up your other document. So we're going to click on where the basic shapes are because it's a whole long list. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to shape collection. You can hit create shape. You can see I already saved a couple other ones. I'm going to call this one notch. Call it notch. You can just call it notch. I have a whole bunch of them. So I'm just going to call it notch four. Hit save. I click on the red socket, create shape. Call this one socket four. Put in the number so that make sure it matches. All right, so now we have our notch and our socket done. The next thing we're going to do, and you may want to pause the video at this point, um, you can continue this on the second part, but if you'd like to jump ahead to moving your phone holder, you can go ahead and do that next. Now I'm going to go back into my basic shapes. I'm going to bring in a box. Now the box, I want to make about, uh, you can make it about two tall. So it's going to be pretty thin, but it will have enough support. 40 by 80. So I can just click and drag it to look as to the number I want, or I can just go to each side, click on the number. It said enter as soon as you type it. Tab will jump to the next, go back and forth between the sides. And this one I want 40. Right, let's have my base. All right, if we want to position this into the right spot, we could rotate this. Now we're going to make a little notch or a little uh, lip rather so that will hold up the front of the phone or the tablet. So I'm going to make a box about 12 high, and it can be pretty thin. We can make it two or three would be fine. It's going to be really, it's going to take up a lot of space. That's just to keep your phone from falling off the front. I'm going to zoom in on just this piece here. And if you're ever having problems where you're zoomed in, I hit the home button and you can Go back to your main screen. I would like to get this flush with the edge, so just lined up perfect. Using my arrow keys, you can nudge it one millimeter at a time. You can always change that. What's less? You want to make it a little bit less at a time or more. If I use the align tool, however, that's I think the easiest way to do it. Select, select both shapes. I already have it centered. It's already along the edge here. If it was not, if I just moved it out of the way on purpose, use the align, click for the center, I want it lined up with the edge. Now it's perfectly lined up. Now I want to make this a little bit softer looking this box here. So what I'm going to do is if I click on the shape, uh, just shape on its own, I'm going to make the radius about three. That's going to round off the edges a little bit. All right. The next thing we're going to do is put this into position. If you want to group your shapes together, you can do that. That way they're all connected. All right, so I'm going to align this one, the notch. So 
So I'll use the select wall shapes and line it up. And perfect. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is the backrest for our foam stand. So I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. Apparently I'm having problems. All right, now we're going to make another flat box. So we're make it too high. You want to make your length about 50. So 50 by 20 by too high. Okay, my next part, we're gonna do a couple rotations. We're gonna flip this on its side. I'm gonna hold my shift key. So now it's on its side, but it's going through my work plane. So I'm gonna hit the D key to bring it back up after it's selected. The next thing we wanna do is to rotate this so it's at an angle about going like that. So I'm going to rotate that. I want about 22.5 or negative 22, depending on which angle you're rotating it from. So if I keep my cursor on the inside of my rotation wheel, it's going to snap. If I have it on the outside, it's going to be more of a free rotation. So you want about that angle, 22.5. And we want to rotate or move this so it overlaps. our socket or notch rather. So I'm about coming out of the angle right about there. So I'm going to select both shapes, group. Now at this point we do want to leave it laying on the bed. Um, when it prints we can't have it vertical like that. It would we would want to keep these separate they're removable. All right, so again, you may want to pause the video at this point. Um, I'll show you the next step on how to add some designs to your phone stand.